Well, hey there, you're on the internet, I have some free time, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now, today's ink I have in sample form Diatramentus Ruby Red. And uh, all the tests were done in this Knox Aristotle in extra fine. Granted, the nib isn't marked, but you might be able to tell that's an extra fine. And this pen and ink sketch in broad. Actually, I think... Oh, no, it has Levenger's Skies of Blue in there. <laughs> yeah. Let's check out the chromatography. Here's standard chromatography, how you're supposed to do it. You put a drop of ink and then instantly dunk it in the water. As you can see, not a lot of resistance. Uh, you can't even tell where the drop initially was. All of it sort of flees. There's a lot of dye moving. Uh, just sort of, it, it's, a, it's a dark pink. Uh, and here's the dry version. As you can tell, it doesn't help it any. It doesn't like to resist water. Now, here's Diatramentus's ruby red. And here's Diamine Ruby, which you can see is sort of more of a, uh, I'd say like a, like a red pink. This I'd say is almost more like a, it's leaning more towards purple just a little bit. I mean, by comparison. Here's Jerobon's Rouge Opera. Jerobon's Rouge Bourgogne. Uh, Black Swan in Australian Roses. And Scented Orchids by Diatramentus and Diamine Classic Red which really is sort of a weak pink bordering on red. But, yeah, so. Top down in density, Clairefontaine, 90 grams per square meter. We're going to have some trouble. Uh, if you've seen any of my Diatramentus reviews in the past, you might have noticed that there's something I've sort of just come to call Diatramentus Syndrome. It seems that the longer the ink is out of the uh, vial or the bottle, because I do have a few bottles of these, uh, sort of the worse the behavior gets once it gets on paper. And there was a bit of a delay between me filling these pens and writing these tests, I'd say a couple days, maybe a week. So we definitely see what I've come to call as diatramentous syndrome. I mean, this is Claire Fontaine, and here we can clearly see feathering. And that's in the extra fine. Uh, in the broad, we see it too. But, yeah, uh, it's a very solid color, you know, it's like, it, like, it's very distinctly, you know, it's bold, but it's not, like, painful in your face. Uh, not a lot of shading. The extra fine took 14 seconds to dry, but uh, the flow was kind of wet. And in the pen and ink sketch, it took 23. Yeah, it, uh, it bled. Like, it actually started to get through in a couple places. Uh, and as you saw, there was, there was feathering. There was certainly feathering. And there was spread. I mean, does that look like an extra fine to you? No, not really. It looks more like a fine. And the broad, I guess, probably in part just because of those like tiny feathers shooting out in every direction. It makes it look broader as well. Uh, not a great showing. And as you can see from the water test, and here it is actually started to explode, which we don't often see. There is some remaining, you know, if you had to, you could, I guess you could recover that, but it did make a huge mess. So, next is Rhodia 80 grams per square meter, where the extra fine took 9 seconds to dry and the broad took 21. It's still a very bold color, still not a lot of shading, as you can see, but again, my camera will focus. As you'll see, there's more feathering. Diatramentous syndrome strikes again. Yeah. And bleed. I mean, legitimate, full-on bleed. How often do we see that in Rhodia? I mean, this is 80 gram paper. This is not, you know, <laughs> this is not kid stuff, you know. I mean, it is kid stuff. It's, it's, anyways, moving on. Uh, yeah, not, not great. There's my shocked face, because how often does that happen on Rhodia? And again, water test made a mess. A lot of it washed away. That would be very difficult to read for the most part. And it exploded. It feathered and exploded in the water test, so. 
There's Tumbleway River paper where, yeah, uh, I mean, as we might expect, epic dry times because, you know, the, the ink was a little wet and it was taking longish comparatively to dry anyway, and Tumbleway River is, you know, known for its longer dry times. The extra fine took 16 seconds to dry, the broad took 29. Um, again, we don't really see much shading at all. Um, we also don't see much of a halo effect either. But, um, yeah, it's a very broad, very solid color. We don't see any feathering or spread, but we do see some freak bleed, which I'm not sure I've ever really seen quite like this before. So, yeah, I mean, it's beautiful, and the flow, you know, like the wet flow on this, like, super smooth paper, you know, it was like writing on glass, but, yeah. Water test, I mean, you can see some, like, pink right at the center, but it, most of it washed away, it dyed the page. Uh, if you had to recover it, maybe you could. Now, for the 20 pound copier paper, I did two separate tests for each pen. Uh, here's the broad pen and ink sketch. You can see just how fat that line got. It, I mean, this is the world's worst copier paper, so. But yeah, there's feathering, and there is most certainly bleed, so. Yeah, uh, but because the paper's so absorbent, more of the paper, or more of the ink sunk in, and so it was hard to wash away. However, it did feather and explode and make an utter mess. Now, this is the extra fine on 20 pound copier paper. Now, here, the broad took three seconds to dry. The extra fine took one and a half, but there's still no shading. You still see a great deal of spread. I mean, just, again, this doesn't look like an extra fine, does it? And, for an extra fine, I mean, look at that bleed. That is a lot of bleed for an extra fine. Granted, this is the world's worst copier paper, so. Yeah, uh, water test is a disaster. The paper started actually acting like chromatography paper, it actually started sucking the ink up, so. Yeah, that's a mess that would be difficult to recover. Next is me notebook paper, where I only use the extra fine. Uh, took two and a half seconds to dry, still no shading. As you'll definitely see, there's lots of feathering and there is lots of bleeding. Granted, this is very cheap paper, but for an extra fine, generally we don't, I mean, look, I'm not even pressing this to a white background. You can, you can read that. And the, all the light's coming from this direction. Like, you know, like, oh, Jesus. I actually can read that. Anyways, uh, water test is a disaster. Uh, because the paper's absorbent, it sunk in, harder to wash out, but it did feather, it did explode, it did make another mess, and the paper is just... Ugh. Now this is modern, contemporary moleskin notebook paper, which means it's terrible, unlike my really nice, freakishly well-behaved old stuff, which behaved really well. I don't know, maybe when it, maybe when it matures, it matures. But yeah, uh... As you can see on this stuff, again, I just used the extra fine, and look at that extreme feathering. I mean, that's to the level of distracting. Yeah, it's it's really bad. It took two seconds to dry. I mean, that's, that is distracting. Uh, the water test was utterly terrible. You can actually see where the paper started to wrinkle in on itself. Uh, it feathered, it exploded, it's dyed page, difficult to read, and... Again, this is an extra fine. Look at that. Again, I'm not even pressing that to the white background. Like, all the light is coming from this direction. That is just utterly awful. So, yeah. There you go for your consideration. Diatramentus Ruby Red. It is a dark pink. It is a bold color. It does not shade. Um, and like many Diatramentus inks, uh, it's better when fresh. Uh, sort of the longer it's in a pen, the more troublesome it can be. So, for your consideration from the Triple N Network, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. Bye.